We're in this series that we have called The Covenant Man. And first we covered the topic, topic of success. Then we looked at consecration. Then we looked at obedience. Then faithfulness. Then prosperity. And uh, now we're looking at, well, faithfulness. And now we're looking at prosperity. Uh, at, uh, Prosperity. Prosperity is the outgrowth of a life lived for God. Uh, seven or ten days ago, Psalm 112 came to my attention. You know, one of the first times Jonathan Shuttlesworth was here, he said that Sue and I were unusually blessed. And so since then, you know, I've, I've kind of had my antenna up on answers to that because I am convinced that God is a God of principle. Once we discover the principle, and he's no respecter of persons, so once we discover the principle, because God's no respecter of persons, anybody can repeat that pattern and get that result. I'm convinced of it. Psalm 112, and now I'm in Psalm 112 literally every day. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. He's, he's what? The man who fears the Lord is what? Blessed. Blessed who finds great delight in his commands. Now, you're not going to go out here and find one person out of a thousand who finds great delight in the commands of God. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So what's in his house? Mortgages, late notices, foreclosure notifications, no. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Good will come to him, which is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. And we've seen in years gone by, we've had men right here at Faith Christian Center try and lie and cheat and steal their way to prosperity. Well, it might work for a year or two, but it, they get caught. And they get found out. And I don't know about you, but I believe that any prosperity that is short-lived is not the kind of prosperity I want. Amen. 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 Good will come to him. Who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice, surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. He will have no fear of bad news. You know, the Lord's been dealing with me about this. Anything you do in fear is sin, and anything you do in fear is not faith. And as believers, we, we need to stop doing what we're doing in fear. I mean, if you're facing a decision, you need to ask yourself, what would fear do, and then don't do that. Amen? Amen. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is secure. He will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. Which means, you know, we might have to wait a day or a week or a month. But uh, the foes of the righteous are going down. God said to Abraham, whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you, I will curse. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn, that means uh, a sign of strength, will be lifted high in honor. The wicked man will see and be vexed. He will gnash his teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. Man, oh man. But there's a lot right there in Psalm 112. That is contrary to what is being taught today and contrary to what you see in social media. Amen. Amen. So right living still matters. And uh, we dealt with that in the section a few weeks back on faithfulness. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is obedience to God over time. Anybody, anybody can obey God for a day or a week. All right, let's pick up a new ground, and we're going to work through the passage as we go for the sake of time. Number one, Achan coveted what he saw. He had no vision for God's plan for supernatural increase. God had a plan for supernatural increase. 
And the plan was, you know, that you go into the promised land and you take the first city, which was a large fortified city, and you take that city supernaturally. The, the thing about it is, though, the, uh, the silver, the gold from the first city was to be the Lord's, to be the Lord's. The other day, Sue had on silver fingernail polish, and Sophie said, you know, Grandma, how come you have silver nail polish on it? She said, well, you know, I like it. It's a change. It's a different. And Sophie said, well, the silver and the gold belong to the Lord. <laughs> to which Sue replied, well, that's only the first fruits of the silver and the gold. Then the rest of it's ours. Amen. And uh, rather than get in a discussion about how, you know, this is basically silver paint. This is not silver. You know, which I'm not sure she, she would get right now. So that was the plan. And they took the large fortified city of Jericho handily by following the specific instructions of the Lord. But then when they went up against little Ai, which was not fortified, and they only felt like they needed to send 3,000 men, they were routed and 36 men died. They'd never had men die. He... He, he saw, he coveted what he saw. Joshua chapter 7, verse 20, Joshua 7, verse 20, Achan replied, it is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in, in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. Number two, Achan sold out himself and his family for next to nothing, all because he coveted what belonged to God. I did the math last Wednesday. I don't want to go all the way back through that. But converting the silver and the gold into ounces and then the price of gold and silver here a few days back, it, it's the modern equivalent of about $27,000. So when we left off last Wednesday, I said, think about it. I said, Achan went to hell for $27,000, and he's been in hell every day since. And not just Achan, but his wife and his children. And uh, the other night, Sue and I watched the, uh, the movie The Passion again. And, you know, there's that scene where Judas sells out Jesus for 30 pieces of gold. And I, I paused the movie and I told Sue, I said, you know, an ounce of silver would be generous for a coin. But I said, even if it was an ounce, 30 ounces of silver is worth about $600. I said, Judas went to hell for $600. And he's been in hell every day since. Now, I see a lot of new people, and I want, to I want to make something perfectly and abundantly clear. And uh, now, when I was 25 and taught this, you know, people, I guess, they just have to believe I knew what I was talking about. But see, now at 60, it's a little different situation because I got all this track record behind me. You know, when I was starting out, I was like a Volkswagen Beetle, but now I'm like a freight train rolling down the tracks. Amen. It's a little different situation. Money's huge. And the reason money is huge is because money is the God of most Americans. Let me give an example. I saw an article today that said that if uh, the least liberal wins. There is no conservative. If the least liberal wins in November, the stock market might correct uh, so many percent. So, you know, my thought was, okay, so we ought to go for the, the person who wants to keep importing hundreds of thousands of Muslims per year, which is the assured suicide of the nation over time. It is just math. It's just math. It's just math. I mean, I look around the room and I see people who have had two children or three children. But these people have seven or eight wives. And uh, now the media here won't report it. You got you to you read the media from London. So you could only have one official wife in a Western democracy which is very convenient because that means all the other six or seven are automatically unwed mothers, which means they automatically not only can get welfare, but they can get, the, and I'm not sure what it's called in the United Kingdom, aid to families with dependent children. It's just math. 
I mean, if people who work for a living have two and a half kids and people who mooch for a living have 12 and 14, it's just math. But Wall Street wants the worst for a few bucks. I, I, don't, I don't understand that at all. Money's huge. Tell your neighbor, money's huge. Money's huge. We did a couple's retreat, not, not the last time we did the couple's retreat in Santa Fe. Two times ago, we did the couple's retreat in Santa Fe. And a, and a man flew out there. He, he had the hots. He was going to make a presentation to us. And uh, so uh, the corporate board of the church was all at the retreat. So we met with this man, and he had a plan. And we agreed to meet with him because he had a plan to lower the payment on this facility. And if I remember right, we had either not moved in here or we had barely moved in here. And you got to understand, I mean, I'm talking about getting used to something. <laughs> you have no idea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to calculate how much money I needed every time the sun rose, and I, I gave up on that. I thought, Lord, I don't even want to know. I don't, I don't even want to know. And then the, these decisions are made, and that we got to do this, and we got to do that. And, you know, uh, I, I don't even want to know about it. Amen. Glory to God. All I know is if I'm in the black, I'm telling you, man, black is beautiful. Amen. You know, just so long as I'm in the black. You know, whatever. Just take care of stuff. You know, just leave me alone to pray, and you leave me alone to pray and dance, and, and it'll all get taken care of. Amen. 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 Say it again. Money's huge. Money's huge. And so he, he flew out there and he had a presentation. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower your payment by whatever. Well, if he had just told us over the phone, so in, instead of 20-year notes, which is what we had, uh, we were going to, I think it was either 25 or 30. And because you go longer... You businessmen and businesswomen, what happens when you borrow longer? What happens to the rate? It goes up. But then you're not just paying longer, you're paying higher. You're not just paying higher, you're paying longer. And, uh, you know, I'm a math guy. I got all kinds of things I'm not good at, but I'm a math guy. And so, you know, it didn't take me but a few minutes. Look at he split, you know. And, I mean, I, I just calculated the total of payments. And it was crazy. It was like $20 million difference. And so we sent him back to the airport. <laughs> and he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it because he was going to cut the payment. All right. Now that illustration I just shared is long-term thinking versus short-term thinking. So for these stock market guys to say, well, we want, we want the... Uh, we want the, the one that's going to ruin the country for sure. The other one might. That's our choice. We have somebody who, who might ruin the country versus somebody who absolutely and most assuredly will ruin the country. That's, that's the decision. Happy days are here again. <laughs> Everybody say, Maranatha, Maranatha. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come quickly. Amen. That's my answer. Amen. That's my vote. I'm catching the first load out. Amen. Amen. So money's just huge. My daughter-in-law wants me to write a new study course called The Bridges of Faith. Because on the way over here, I was thinking, this is a bridge you cross. I, I, a young man approached me in the cafe today, about 20 had nothing. I mean, knew nothing about the Bible. His parents had never taken him to church. You could tell, product of public school, but he had just gotten saved here at Faith Christian Center. Pastor, can I bother you a minute? How do I get started? 
And so, you know, it's like with Jesus. People walk by and they're surprised to see me talking to somebody that nobody knows. But to me, that's not a waste of time. A waste of time is talking to some church member that's asking me the same thing they've asked me 25 times before. <laughs> and, and, they, and I gave them the same answer 24 times and they never took action on what I said 24 times. So they come back the 25th time hoping the answer will be different. <laughs> I'm a preacher of the word of God. I'm not the FBI director. So I'm not going to give you a different answer. It's going to be the same answer. And I talked to him about it. I said, because I, I, could, I could just read him. And I told him. I said, the biggest thing for you to decide right now, right up front is this, to see it. That, because it's always two things. It's always two things. Always. Sex and money. It's always two things. Sex and money. And so I told him, I said, the biggest thing for, for you getting started is to see that you can trust Father God and that he has no law, he has no prohibition, he has not identified anything as a sin that is not harmful to you. I said, that's the, that's the, biggest, that's the biggest bridge you got to cross right here, right now, right up front. I said, now, with, I said, my own dad, Never had any dealings with me where he was not running an agenda. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered what came out of his mouth. He was running an agenda. And you just couldn't trust it. I mean, why is this man offering me money? I mean, he offered to buy me a house once. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. But everything was strings attached, strings attached, strings attached, and an agenda. But I said, you, gotta, you cannot judge this God by your experience. And I said, you have to see this by faith that he loves you and his plan for your life is greater and better than anything you could possibly imagine on your own. I said, once you see that and you begin to live based upon that, I said, it makes everything easy. And see, what's easy for that young man is he doesn't have anything. I'm telling you, if you're here tonight and you don't have anything, you should shout and rejoice because tithing's easy. It was the rich young ruler that went to hell because he wouldn't obey Jesus unless he repented later. See, the rich man, I know because just here a few months back, I had one in my house and, you know, I talked to him and Austin talked to him. It's hard for a rich man who got rich without God to submit and begin to obey God with what? Money. Yeah. Right. Amen. I read today that two-thirds of all divorces are initiated by women. And guess what the two issues are on those two-thirds of divorces? It's always the same thing. What are, what are the two things? Sex and money. Or it could be money and sex. <laughs> so it's just monstrous. And so Achan, he saw, I mean, think about it. He didn't just see how they took Jericho supernaturally. He saw the plagues in Egypt. He saw Pharaoh's uh, firstborn son die. He saw the Red Sea open. He saw uh, Pharaoh and the army of Egypt swallowed up by the sea. He ate bread from heaven. He drank water from the rock. And at the first test in the promised land, he, he saw and he coveted. And also, not only that, he was privy. See, Achan lived after the Ten Commandments. So commandment number 10 is thou shalt not covet. So he knew all of that. But he saw and he coveted. I'm telling you, man, it's huge. I'm telling you. I mean, it, and why? Well, 
I mean, if we lived in a world where there was gold and silver laying around the roads, it probably would, people wouldn't be like this. But because of the scarcity of true wealth, people have made money their God. And I, I just don't get it. But see, I, I'm a strange cat. I mean, if I got elected to Congress and some Saudi Arabian sheikh or, or Prince offered me $10 million to sell out America and vote for, you know, stuff that's going to hurt America, I'd tell them I'd t I would not be a preacher in my response. <laughs> but these guys, man, they'll just sell us out. And nobody's thinking about their grandchildren. Nobody's thinking about their great-grandchildren. Nobody's thinking about what kind of country it's going to be in 50 years. They just sell us out. Money's huge. Why was Jimmy Carter's presidential library? Why was George, George Herbert Walker Bush's presidential library? Why was Bill Clinton's presidential library? Why was W's library over here at SMU? And why will the one coming up in Chicago be built with Saudi money? Ain't nobody doing nothing for nothing. They're doing something for something. There is a trade. The Saudis have never given me a nickel, and they're not ever going to give me a nickel because I'm not doing anything for them. Right. Do you see that? Yes. Money's huge. And for that young man th uh, this afternoon, it's easy because he ain't got nothing. I mean, if, 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 if you got some lousy stinking, you know, $750 an hour job or whatever, or whatever the minimum wage is now, I mean, you know, I mean, who can't tie it? 75 cents. These are the bridges of faith. And if you don't cross them, you don't get to the destination. And I'm telling you, man, I mean, there's Pastor Gene, man, I'm just, I'm just dancing and rejoicing across the bridge. And there's 100,000 people on this side that go to church and 100,000 people on that side that go to church. And they're trying to swim the river and drowning and failing and, and building rafts and doing whatever, trying to get across the same river, gnashing their teeth at me because I'm up on the bridge, you know, rejoicing before the Lord. Amen. They're trying to get to the same destination. They're trying to get, you know, to comfort, comfort, comfortable. But let me tell you what, man, I'm telling you, you do something without God, it's automatically harder than doing something with God. Amen. And 36 men died. And so hence the penalty. Verse 22, so Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua together with all Israel took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold wedge, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent and all that he had. A few months back, I'm standing out here after uh, 9 a.m. service, and a man comes up and hands me a, a, an envelope. He says, you know, this is a letter explaining, you know, where I've been and what's been going on with my life. Oh, okay. I stick it in my pocket. And then I get back between services, and I open it up, and I read the letter, and it's just nonsense. Skating around, you know, his lifestyle. And there's 520s in there, if I remember right. And as clearly as I have heard the voice of God in 60 years, I heard God say, and I'd never heard it before, and I've never heard a preacher refer to anything like this. It was brand new to me. I, as clearly as I have ever heard God in my life, I heard God say, are you going to mix that money with yours? And man, I had a revelation. There's some money that comes with a curse attached. Because that man's a kitty raper. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, he smokes a joint every six months. A kitty raper. 
Are you going to mix that money with yours? So my first thought was shred it. I thought, well, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. And then I thought, well, we'll send, we'll send it to his wife. Sue said, no, you can't do that. They got enough problems. They don't, they don't need that to argue about. <laughs> and so we, we picked one of these ministries that emphasizes ministry to the poor, put it in a plain white envelope, wrapped in plain white paper, and mailed it. They don't know where it came from. It won't affect them, but it'll affect me. <clears throat> There's some money. See, and, and people who are money whores over the course of a life, they're going to come across cursed money. And because they're money whores and they have no discernment and no discretion, they just take it in and mix it with their own money. And what they basically do is they poison their money. Amen. I see a lot of new people, so I have to rehearse a couple of things. Years ago, we had two guys up at I-30 and uh, they were in a Ponzi scheme. Now, you realize in real time, nobody knows what uh, it is a Ponzi scheme. I mean, you know, maybe somebody invented new, some new thing. And it was basically a thing where you were supposed to invest with these guys, and they had a way of changing dollars and pesos for better than the exchange rate. And this was the scam. But we didn't know it was a scam in real time. And so they take me to lunch over at the old Steak and Hill that used to be up there by Six Flags on Road to Six. It wasn't Road to Six Flags, but it was up by Six Flags. And uh, they said, Pastor Gene, we want you to invest in our, our deal. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, they looked all hurt and disappointed. And, and these were, these were mo moderate givers. These were, they weren't top dog givers, and they weren't at the bottom. I mean, they were probably like about two-thirds up the list. And uh, so, you know, they looked all hurt. But notice, what, the me telling the story, I wasn't worried about them being hurt. And it, it, frankly, I didn't care if they left. I have never gone backwards standing for righteousness. Amen. Not once in 43 years have I gone backwards for standing for righteousness. Amen. I mean, it's not that I acted like I don't care if you go. I mean, I'm a polite guy. But that's not going to influence my decision. Ever. Ever. I mean, you could come up after the service. I didn't like that message, and I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> I, I'm not changing. I'm not yielding. I'm not bending. I'm not bowing. Praise God. I'm standing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then they both slid white envelopes across the table, and they said, Pastor, there's uh, $10,000 in each envelope. You don't have to invest with us. Just let us say you did. Now, I, I don't know what the year that was. You'd have to go back and do the math. But I mean, tw uh, 20,000 bucks. And I'm talking 25 years ago, maybe. I'm t what would that be? $20,000, 25 years ago. I'm, that's money. That's money. I said, no, I won't do it. I said, a good name is more valuable than gold. I said, I can stand up any Sunday and this is a long, long, long time ago. I said, I can stand up any Sunday, raise $20,000. I said, why would I sell you my reputation for $20,000? I said, if I sell you my reputation and you go tell people I invested in your deal and, and that thing uh, ends up in the Fort Worth Star Telegram, I said, I, I wouldn't be able to stand up and raise five cents, let alone $20,000. Yep. And sure enough, sure enough. Now, those two didn't go to prison, but there were people who went to prison over that. It's a bridge across. It's a bridge across. See, I crossed that bridge. That's why a lot of people don't understand me as a pastor, you know. Uh, I, I crossed a bridge. I'm, I'm not selling out. Yeah, but you could have more people. I'm not selling out. Yeah, but, you know, they, they would print your articles in some Christian blog. I'm not selling out. Well, you, you, could, you could be invited to pray at the city council meeting. I mean, which ought to happen since you're the longest serving pastor in the city of Arlington by like more than a decade. I'm not selling out. Amen. You tell me not to use the name of Jesus and I'm going to tell you where you're going to spend your eternity. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and what thou doest, doest quickly. <laughs> Amen. 
I'm not selling out. Yeah, but they could come arrest you. I'm not selling out. They could put you in prison. I'm not selling out. They could tell you to board the train. Well, that's not going to happen because we're going to have a gunfight. That's right. Which just means I go to heaven quick. I'm not boarding a train. I'm not going to a rehabilitation camp to learn how to be sensitive to uh, gender <laughs> issues. Amen. And you, you have to make your decision, see? And, and Fred Price really blessed us with this way, 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 way back. He said, you make your decisions early in life and then you never have to make them later. If you make your decisions early in life, like to not cheat on your wife. Yeah, but pastor, you, you weren't tempted like I was. T you don't even know what you're talking about. Somebody famous, high net worth, you don't even know what you're talking about. You, you were tempted by skanks. I've been tempted by smoking hot babes. I mean, totally absolute. But you got to make up your mind up front. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Amen. I'm not going to, I don't meet with women alone. Well, if, if you won't counsel me, I'm leaving. Bye. I'm not doing it. Because my pastor taught us growing up, it'll be women or money. And if the devil can't snare you with women or money, he'll lie about it. Well, see, if I don't meet with women, then how can he lie about it? That's right. Right. Only person kissing on me. You know, I texted, sent Sue a text yesterday. I said, I just got kissed by a, a beautiful blonde. And she, she texted me right back, says, so, so, so Sophie saw you at school? I said, yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, you make your decisions up front. Then you're not tempted later on. In other words, I'm not going to cheat anybody. Then you're not tempted later on. I'm not going to lie to make a buck. Then you're not tempted later on. You make your decisions up front. And, and you do these things in faith, believing that the God I referred to at the front out of Psalm 112 will see your righteous ways and he will reward you beyond your wildest dreams and imagination. Yes. Well, let me get blunt. I could take you to the corner, Salem and Beachmont Avenues. I told my father, so took, we, we went to lunch. I told my father, I wasn't going back to Miami University. And uh, I was going to Bible school. God called me in the ministry. I had submitted to the call. I love that Southern Baptist term. I had submitted to the call and I was going to go to Bible school. And he prophesied over my life. He said, I'm not ever going to give you another nickel. He said, you're going to have to pay for your own schooling. He said, you'll never have anything. You'll never go anywhere. You'll never be anybody. He said, you're going to be poor and broke all the days of your life. And standing here tonight, my net worth far exceeds anything he could have ever even thought about having. Amen. And I've been in 40, 50 nations of the world. See, if you'll have eyes to see it, whatever the wicked say to you when they gnash their teeth at you, your God in heaven will hear it and he'll see to it that the exact opposite comes to pass in your life. If you'll have faith to see it when the wicked gnash their teeth at you and, and they curse your life, God is watching and God is hearing and God will reverse that and he'll give you double, quadruple, quintuple what they're prophesying in the negative, God will give it to you in the positive. Amen. After that, after that, somebody pulled up in front of the dealership. My dad was a Ford dealer, pulled up in front of a dealership in a, in a Jaguar, XK, I, I think they were E's, XKE's, that beautiful car, 
uh, late 60s, early 70s, just gorgeous lines. And I'm just, I mean, I've never seen anything like that. People don't go to a Ford store driving that stuff. And I'm, I'm just standing in the showroom looking at it. And, and this old, immoral, ungodly salesman, his name was Benny Sabato, he came over and he says, you like that, Gene? I said, yeah. I said, I've never seen anything like that. He said, well, you're going to Bible school. He said, you'll never have anything like that in your life. And years and years ago, I'm praying one morning, and the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord said, you have unfinished business. I said, what is that? And he, re he reminded me of that. <laughs> and so I took my hot little number and put her in a car, and we went down to Fort Worth, and I bought her a Jaguar convertible. <laughs> Let me tell you what, God will see to it, not only that the curses of the wicked do not come to pass in your life. They'll bounce off you like Teflon, but God will make it his business to make the opposite of what they have prophesied come to pass in your life. This wicked, foul city council person told everybody that we would never have gas wells. What kind of wicked, foul person actually told our representative if we would put him next to the playground, she would, she would approve it? Wicked, 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 ungodly, immoral to oppose the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and want gas wells next to a playground. But I'm telling you, God intervened. I didn't get mad. I didn't, I didn't go to the media. I didn't get, you know, I didn't... Man, I just went to the, I went to the Lord in prayer. I mean, I, I kept my mouth shut. I just gave it to God in prayer. And uh, the night that it went through, she said, well, I guess they are drilling. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you live for God, when you say, I'm, I'm not going to touch what belongs to God, and I'm not going to sell out, and I'm not going to compromise, and I'm not going to live like the world. I'm telling you, man, what do you think in Psalm 12 when he's talking about that horn being lifted up? He's talking about the strength of God will show up on your behalf. Yes. Yes. The strength of God, not the weakness of God. Amen. The strength of God will show up on your behalf. See, and that's the way they live. That's, that's how they took Jericho. But then somebody saw and they coveted and got them messed up. God had a plan of supernatural increase for all Israel, including Achan and his family. See, we see this over and over and over in the word of God. If we will give God his due, if we, if we will give God what he says belongs to him, he will bless all the work of our hands. This entire generation, it just breaks my heart. They don't want to work. They, they want free stuff. They want free stuff. They will vote for same-sex showers. They will vote for abortion. They will vote for a U.S. Navy where the word man is no longer allowed to be used. They will vote for anything to get a cell phone, a lousy, stinking cell phone. And you need to see it. You just need to cope with it. God's plan for supernatural increase is purposefully rigged. It's a test, brother. It is a test. Bud Sickler used to call it the money test. It's a test. And you got off easy. You have not been commanded by God to march your firstborn up to the top of Mount Moriah and put him on a wood pile with a, 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 a fire in one hand and a knife in the other and kill him. Well, that's just terrible. Yeah, God had a plan. Jehovah Jireh. Isaac said, Dad, I see the wood and I see, I see the fire and I see the knife. Where's the, where's the ram for the sacrifice? That old prophet of God, talk about watching his mouth, said, Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> see, you've never had your back up against a wall compared to Abraham. You've never been tested by the Lord like Abraham. 
I mean, he passed the test of all humanity. And when his back was against the wall, Daddy, I see the wood. Daddy, I see the fire. Daddy, I see the knife. Where's the sacrifice? Jehovah Jireh. Man, that ought to be our response when it looks like we're going under. Jehovah Jireh. I mean, that ought to be our response. I mean, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide, not, not get Uncle Sam and drag. <laughs> the Lord will provide. See, and Achan was a part of God's plan. Say it out loud. Achan was a part of God's plan. I mean, he was a part of God's plan. His wife was a part of God's plan. His children were a part of God's plan. They were part of God's plan. And God didn't do it. They did it. So God has a part to play, and we have a part to play. We cannot do God's part, and he will not do our part. See, God wanted all of Israel to participate in his plan for supernatural increase. But rather than have faith for future prosperity, Achan coveted what he saw in the present. Achan took what belonged to God and thereby failed to enter into God's plan for supernatural increase. When Sue and I got married, our, our grocery budget was $10 a week. Didn't take long to figure out, man, we couldn't live on $10 a week. So we, we did a 50% increase and went to $15 a week. Now, you got to adjust all that for inflation. I remember I told her, I said, I, I, I don't know why you can't make it on $10 a week. I'll, I'll take the $10 and I'll go to the store. And uh, so I came home. I came home with a grocery cart of Coca-Colas and Doritos and Lay's potato chips and <laughs> $10 worth of what I wanted. <laughs> And she just burst out laughing. He said, well, that's great, but what are we going to eat? <laughs> and I said, I'm never going back. <laughs> I know my gifts and callings, and this is not one of them. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'm ready to go to prophesying over you tonight. Yeah. There was a time when we first heard these concepts when, when literally, I mean, we, we were living where we, we could eat out maybe once a month. I mean, and we had to watch it then. I remember going to restaurants with the children. Austin may remember it. And, and the way we'd pray over our food when we first began to ratchet down our promiscuous mouths. If you're here tonight and you don't have enough, you have a promiscuous mouth. And we began, we began to tighten the noose on those promiscuous mouths. And we would pray over this way, Father God, I thank you that I can eat where I want, we can eat where we want, when we want, what we want, and pay cash. Amen. Now that sounds ridiculous. But that's where we were. And I'm telling you, my great father God has brought me from that point in my life to where if I decided tomorrow I wanted to eat in Miami or San Francisco or wherever, it would literally not make any difference. Except the time. I don't have the time. Sue's in Missouri, so that, that ain't, that ain't going to happen. Because I'll tell you what, the expense would be nothing compared to an unhappy woman missing lunch in Miami or San Francisco. <laughs> I cannot afford that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you'll just yield, if you'll just submit, if you'll just give this great God what he says belongs to him in the first place and cross the bridge that I'm not going to touch something that's yours. People hand me money all the time. And uh, I, I don't know why they do it the way they do it. People hand me envelopes. People hand me money all the time. And a lot of times, you know, it just goes in my pocket. I get home. I open it up. It says Faith Christian Center. Or it's cash. It's cash. It's cash. But on the envelope, it says Faith Christian Center. That's not mine. That's not mine. I would not touch that. That is not mine. I bring it back up here. That's not mine. I don't care. Well, it's cash. It's not mine. 
It doesn't say Dr. Gene Lingerfeld. It says Faith Christian Center. That's not mine. The only shortcut you have in front of you is the shortcut to hell. (laughs) Man, you go God's way, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. I mean, you have not even begun to imagine how far down the road this God will take you. I mean, I'm telling you, man, this church is stuck in middle classville. And I'm telling you that middle classville is okay, but then it just gets old. I'm telling you, it just gets, I'm telling you, there was a time when Olive Garden seemed acceptable, but I mean, I'm just telling you, there comes a point where you just can't hardly stand to go. Amen. I've sat at the last greasy table I intend to sit at for the rest of my life. Amen. They wipe it down and it's still greasy. Something's wrong. Amen. I'm telling you, now the kids may want to go. If your kids want to go, you know, that's, that's another thing. But I'm talking about that is not, that is not eaten out. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the same God that brought you from nothing and brought you to where you are is standing ready tonight to take you from where you are to ever higher and increasing levels of prosperity. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. I said there is nothing too hard for the Lord. I thought I said there is nothing too hard for the Lord. And the same God that brought you out of that apartment, the same God that brought you out of that place of nothingness, the same God that brought you out of that car you used to have jumper cables in the trunk just in case, the same God that brought you from there to this point is the, he's standing ready. He's standing ready. He is ready. He is willing. And I came to tell you tonight, he is able to take you to a place where you have not yet seen or comprehended headed or begun to believe you could get to. Man, I'm telling you, he says, Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. If it's the will of God that you eat the best of the land, it must be the will of God that you wear the best of the land. I'm telling you, there's life beyond Crocs and swimsuits and (laughs) t-shirts. I, I, I love my Crocs. <laughs> if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the best of the land. Amen. You know, man, I got those Shuttlesworth cousins going because they were talking about Applebee's. I said, no true anointed man of God sits at a table at Applebee's. <laughs> They didn't know what to say. (laughs) How are we going to disagree? (laughs) And if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the best of the land. If it's the will of God that I eat the best of the land, must be the will of God that I wear the best of the land. If it's the will of God that I eat the best of the land, must be the will of God that I vacation in the best of the land. If it's the will of God that I eat the best of the land, must be the will of God that I live in the best of the land. If it's the will of God that I eat the best of the land, it must be the will of God that I drive the best of the land. And so I just laid a hold of it. I just repeated what one of my great fathers in the faith said, Kenneth Hagin, which I just did again. So I laid a hold of it. I named it and claimed it. I confessed it. I believed I received it. And you know what? Here it came. Here it came. Here it came. And you're the recipients of it, whether you want to admit it or not. You didn't park on gravel. You didn't park on asphalt. There's no sinkholes out there. You know, you go to your typical church. It's it's asphalt. It's sinking. The weeds are growing up through it. Oh, no. no. Not the people I pastor. People I pastor, no, 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 no. We're not going to have any people I pastor ruin their high heel shoes walking across the gravel parking lot. Oh, no, 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 not my people. My people are not going to park on asphalt where the, the, the car could sink while you're in the middle of church. Oh, no, oh, no. You could land a Boeing airplane out there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, amen. Not, not my people, amen, 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 amen. 
You know, you go to your, we, we play tournaments. We go to some other school. They call it a gym. It's not a gym. It's concrete that they sprayed paint on. Or, you know, if they really upgrade, they spray that rubber junk on concrete. It's bad for the knees. It's bad for the joints. Or if they step up again, they glue wood or some wood product to concrete. Oh, no, not here at Faith Christian Center. This is a springboard floor, just like what they got over there where the Mavericks play. I'm telling you why. Why? Why does all that matter? What are you talking about? What, what are these words coming out of your mouth? The people connected to me deserve the best. The people, the people who hear the word of God deserve the best. The people who lay a hold of the word of God deserve the best. And the children, the children of the people that are connected to me don't deserve the have their knees torn up because we're too cheap or we're too poor to properly build a gymnasium. The best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best is what is coming because that is who our God is. Our God is a God of victory. Our God is a God of triumph. Our God is a God of prosperity. And I will not dishonor him by building something cheap or driving something cheap or wearing something cheap or living in something cheap. I have a great God. And he manifests himself through me. All you got to do is submit. Amen. All you got to do is cooperate <laughs> and get rid of your promiscuous mouth Amen. and say what God says. Amen. And it can be hard to have your back up against the wall and lift your hand and bow your head and say, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord shall provide. 